All right, it is Wednesday, January 31st, and we are five minutes away, uh, four minutes now, from a new State of Play debuting very soon. Uh, a 40-minute show with extended looks at Stellar Blade, Rise of the Ronin, and also a good portion of what's going to show up here was already leaked, so we kind of already know what a lot of this is going to be, but 40 minutes and uh, some PS Studio games, so I figured this is worth at least doing uh, reactions, but also, more importantly, discussing the, the show afterwards, so let's get to it. Starting off with PS Studios. Starting off with Helldivers 2. Here's your reminder, this game's coming out very soon. <laughs> Hi everyone. Herman! Hello Herman. And I'm honored to present Dude's always taking vacations. Titles coming later this year and beyond, with extended gameplay and announcements we hope you find as exciting as we do here at PlayStation. Enjoy the show. Yeah, this is going to be like a short-term thing, presumably. That's what state of plays normally are. They don't showcase games that are like super far out. So what won't be here is also, I think, part of the conversation. But here's Stellar Blade. She can also take a well-deserved break to restore her health. <laughs> she can sit down in a lounge chair. Hostile survivors. She's got a lot of outfits. War. Ooh. Very cool enemy design. Worse. Looks promising. That was a very cool look at the game. Do you have a release window? Oh, a confirmed date, April 26th. Very cool. <laughs> it's also coming very soon. <laughs> this, it's just the first half of this year is just loaded. Hey, there's Sonic. That was like day of we saw more things pretty much leak this. I'm happy for Sonic fans. And based off that language alone, kind of tells you where I fall on this. Not a Sonic guy myself. But I won't throw flack or any shade at those that enjoy Sonic. I feel like you you all kind of have to take what you get nowadays, right? <laughs> Can't get mad at Sony for supporting Booba Physics. Two games so far. Zenless Zone Zero. In development for PlayStation 5. Okay, so that was a, a new debut. And then there's Foam Stars <laughs> right after that. Also a game coming up very soon. Pretty important that Sony's got the backing from MiHoYo to, you know, be the sort of lead console platform for those games, considering the numbers they do. Oh, Dave the Diver. <laughs> awesome. All right. And I, obviously I hear a lot about it. I haven't played it myself yet. Yeah, it's a very well-received game. This, this April. My God. <laughs> what is coming in the second half of the year? Oh, <laughs> okay, I'm a Godzilla fanboy. That's that's pretty tight. Stunlock Studios. What am I watching? Should I? Am I supposed to know what this is? Rising. 2024. Only for PS5. Although presumably, if it's multi-platform, then it will show up on. Other well, the trailers will show up on other platform holders eventually. Hi, oh, Sean Benson. Benson. This next game is a result of a very close partnership with Konami and marks the return of a horror franchise that has been with us since the original PlayStation. Let's take a Silent look at next for Silent Hill. Ah, finally. Let's get a date. I can be like her. Oh. Oh, okay. This is, uh... Well, we've got like three different things going on. Oh, <laughs> all right, this is cool. Ah, this is the, the texting thing. Okay, what? I forget which, what the name for this one is. I feel like it's been so long since we covered the Silent Hill rumors. I, I'm forgetting the name of all these projects. Okay, the short message, there we go. Yeah, this like showed up on PSN backend, so, alright, free game. Because there's like an ARG or something with that, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to speak too much on it. Mm, Shadow Drop. It's been like half a year that we, we were all wondering, when are they going to just randomly drop a short message? Because we knew that was a thing. Like, it appeared, it was a very real thing, and it was just MI for a long time, and so 
okay, available today. That's the uh, the texting thing where we saw a lot of uh, leaks about what that game, or kind of what they were going for with that. Looks very cool, though, now, now that it's official. And here's some proper gameplay for Silent Hill 2. So, let's hope we get a date for this. Silent Hill 2. Doesn't look bad. I don't hate it. <laughs> In development, well, yeah, we know that. Wow, they still don't know. They're still not saying anything about. Wow, alright. Okay, here's uh, Ken Levine's game. I'm, I'm already so into this. God. It's been such a long time since we got something like this from... Well, again, Ken, but just this th that sort of creative vision and the sort of principles going into how he approaches games. Judas! In development for PS5. Okay, so... No, like, release window for that either, but that is exactly kind of what I was hoping for out of that game. All right, here's our Metro PSVR 2 game. This is, I would say this is kind of a big deal. I think it's a great thing that we're getting more PSVR 2 content, obviously. Metro Awakening VR. Another PSVR 2 title. <laughs> okay, he's just messing these skeletons up. Legendary Tales action role-playing game. Wow, that's also coming out the same day as Helldivers 2. Dragon's Dogma. I make no mistake. Still gotta play the first one. I think the concern here right now is if this game's gonna ship at 30 FPS with no performance mode. That's kind of the talk around this game right now, huh? Rise of the Ronin, let's go. I'm digging it. Yeah, right off the bat, we saw a lot of traversal. Because you know, there's going to be comparables to, like, Tsushima, but, I mean, it seems clear this is a very different kind of game. Yeah, I'm into this. I can get down with this. It's not like... It's not like Team Ninja doesn't know good gameplay, you know? <clears throat> so, this, this looks very, uh... Kitty, this looks very fun. Uh, here's Until Dawn. So who's making it? Who's doing? I'm. I would assume Nixus Software, in collaboration with somebody else. Oh, Ballistic Moon is doing it. <laughs> what? Ballistic. This is their first project. They're gonna ship is an Until Dawn port. Makes sense, I guess. It's the same talent. <laughs> they made the, made a new studio. I was like, Supermassive's not gonna do it, but okay, Supermassive is doing it indirectly. Okay, all right. Ballistic Moon handling a Until Dawn PlayStation 5 and PC port. Well, that's one way to get a studio off the ground, right? Hey, give us this game that we made at, at another studio. Rebuilt and enhanced for PS5 and PC. Until Dawn. Looks nice. I mean, if you go back and play it nowadays, it looks... um. Not bad, but it's a pretty, you know, dated PS4 game compared to, I think, a lot of other titles in that library. And here is DS2. <gasps> Melissa. You got a part in this game? What? Are, what is this <laughs> face mask, which is... Ridiculous. Ah, uh, what the... Welcome to Drawbridge, Sam, and to the GHV Magellan, our mobile base of operations. <laughs> really, Sam? Your buttocks? What about shotgun? I prefer the driver's seat. Oh, great. Sam's got his own Mimir. Still on the brink of extinction. Ooh. Don't act like you don't see it. That's so cool. A lot of things changed after you went That's to That's life. cool. Especially within the UCA. I like it. Bridge is no longer overseas to do I like it. Bots are capable of handling deliveries. He's alive. Looks like he decided to 
trade in that rope for a stick this go around. <laughs> yeah, where's the bridge, baby? Well, there's got to be a there's got to be a very deep story hook involved with that. Huh? Was it you that killed Lou? You still don't know, do you? Oh my God! I want to know what's going on. This is so stupid. I love it. This is so ridiculous. Now it's time to finish the journey, Sam. Oh my God. <laughs> Please understand, Sam. <sighs> We never meant to when? string you along. When? That chrysalis. We found her inside. Who's that? Tara is a sort of primordial soup. Oh, there's... There's oh, Elle. I saw her home. 2025. That's fine. 2025 game. Oh, God. Today, oh, look at that. I'm excited to announce that together. Oh! Next generation? Wow! It's also a movie at the same time. Stay <laughs> tuned. Wow, look at that. The parallels between Herman Hulst doing this with Kojima and Andrew House way back when, when Death Stranding was originally announced and they were forming that new studio out of the Columbia Pictures. <laughs> wow, that's, well, a super early thing. Before we go, I have oh. one final announcement. State of Play will return February 6th with an extensive look at Final oh. Fantasy VII Rebirth. Rebirth. Square Enix will be shared. Wow. That was like undeniably better than the PlayStation showcase we had. I was hoping we were gonna get Concord gameplay, but that's, well, I would say fine, but I don't know how fine that is. That game's supposed to ship this year, and you expect that's something where it's gonna be the back half of this year, because we just saw a lot of stuff that's, that's still shipping within the first half of this year. Uh, but going back to the Death Stranding 2 thing, um, I'm into what we just saw, but, yeah, the parallels between that and uh, the Andy House announcement before, so it's super early. We won't we won't see whatever that game is for a very long time. He said next generation, which I don't I, that might just be like a figure of speech, you know, culmination of his career as he was discussing. So <clears throat> I'm not sure if that's him really implying that's going to be something that's going to ship on PlayStation Six. Uh, although that's very possible considering they have to wrap up DS2 before they even start full production of that title, but. Um, getting that out there immediately of this long-term roadmap of you know another new ip tactical espionage action from kojima which i think is very exciting for people and <clears throat> so and back to the the ds2 trailer it would appear as though they're definitely addressing a lot of the criticism surrounding the first game which um you know for some people it's like they were totally into the gameplay loop which i was one of those people but for those that weren't you know a big part of that was simply how there was not like sort of action focused gameplay right <clears throat> the whole oh it's just a walking simulator thing which is not entirely true but clearly it would appear as though um they're they're trying to address that with the second game with those what appeared to be just like robot porters walking around which appear to be hostile because the whole plot line for the first game sort of implied that you could never really kill anybody and that's why there's not a whole lot of gunplay in the first game so um, and I have full confidence that they're probably going to take that to heart with the second game. So maybe there is something there for people to enjoy the second game now that they might, you know, spend a bit more time uh, having action sequences. But all, you know, in terms of like hot off the presses, that was um, that was a good state of play, a very good state of play. A lot there to to enjoy, a lot that's coming up in the short term. But not seeing Concord uh, or Fair Games, which we had a cinematic trailer for, uh, would have been nice to like get proper gameplay for that. But again, like it's <laughs> there's only so many things they're going to show during a state of play. This is about as big a state of plays get so far, at least. I mean, I guess it's notable that um, we had a shadow drop too for Silent Hill: Short Message because that was um, again something where people were theorizing for a while that 
you know, that this thing is going to like come out at some point. We were all expect, uh, expecting it to be some kind of shadow drop because it was appearing on PSN. It was rated. Uh, it was a very well known entity. It wasn't like even outside of the leaks. We just, we knew it was a real thing that, um, Konami was sitting on at some point. So it was more a matter of when they were going to put it out there. So that's cool. Um, I'm sure there's other things that I'm missing or not thinking about right now. Um, seeing Judas for uh, Ken Levine's new game. I loved that. I was just glad that we saw, I guess, little snippets of gameplay. I just didn't want to see like another, oh, cinematic trailer. And here's like a voiceover with a bunch of imagery that doesn't really tell us exactly what this game is going to be like. But um, that very much looks like a Bioshock-esque Ken Levine game, which I'm also totally into. Having another uh, Miho uh, Mihoyoverse game is a big get for PlayStation, so very uh, strategic. There's a good relationship there, so that's beneficial to Sony. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's, I, it's a good state of play. I think that was a very strong showing for, I guess, the title of the show having a bit of baggage. Some people <laughs> really dislike state of plays when they don't, you know, wow folks. But that was very tight for what was uh, close looks at also Stellar Blade and Rise of the Ronin, which we can't overlook. Ronin looked, um, I think, different enough. So that was a great way to sort of get a bird's eye view of what the, you know, sort of um, key ideas and principles are for that game and the, the core gameplay loop, which is going to be very different from other samurai games, since there's been some notion there that there's some saturation with samurai games, but that looks different enough. And Stellar Blade, I think, looks good. I don't know. It's... it's maybe hard to like really get into it fully understanding i guess the entire sales pitch i mean we did get a sort of story breakdown but i think there's a lot more that we still need to see about that game to sort of understand the gameplay loop for that as well but but yeah now i guess we wait to see if they do a playstation showcase in uh may if they do intend on doing one within the first half of this year kind of like they did with last year and that would be ideal considering we need to know about some games coming for the back half of this year which again concord would be one of them right so if there's going to be a stage for that then that would be the time to do it obviously sony also does like to bring things to jeff Keighley shows so we do have summer games fest if they don't do a playstation showcase um and they will lean on the ps blog when they have to which is quite often nowadays um but that's if they do a showcase in May, right? If, if we don't get a showcase in May and they're light on Summer Games Fest, then that means we're looking at another September showcase possibly, which at that point we're already in the later half of this year. So um, <clears throat> that's kind of where I sit on it. There's still some heavy understood skepticism with um, you know, where the company's going for, again, all these studios that we don't know what they're doing. But considering they outlined exactly what's going to be in the show, I think this was uh, very enjoyable to see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all on Friday for Let's Talk PlayStation. We'll cover up any other stories and details that we're not covering right now because this is, like, hot off the presses. Uh, but otherwise, that is it. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in my next video. You take it easy.